Hello friends, this video is part 6 of microservice tutorial. In first video, we discuss monolithic and microservice architecture. In second video, we developed a Spring Boot project from scratch, which is very useful for the beginners. In third part, we created an Spring Boot application using MySQL database. And here we created our first microservice student. In fourth part, we created an Spring Boot project using MS SQL database. And here we created our second microservice course. In fifth part, we discussed about gateway. Here we, we saw all the possibilities what gateway can do. Before moving forward, I would like to request you to please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel. In last video, we created a project for API Gateway using Spring Cloud Gateway. There we accessed microservice course API through API Gateway. There we configured course service URL in Gateway configuration file, which is application.yml file. But there was a problem of configuring service complete URL if there are many instances running for the same service. And in cloud-based services, we have a habit of changing location frequently of any service. And we deploy services dynamically when there is a demand for that. We deploy and undeploy services whenever there is a need. In that case, using gateway for service registry is not possible. So for this, we use Eureka server for registry of microservices and API gateway for purely routing the service call. Now, whenever we deploy a microservice, it registers itself to the Eureka server as each microservice has Eureka server address in its configuration file. In this way, microservice becomes Eureka client. So here you see that now Eureka has the address of each microservices. So in this way, Eureka server holds each microservice address like IP address of server where service is running and port number on which that service is running. So whenever a user interface calls any service, it first comes to gateway and then gateway try to find out the application name based on the filter and predicate and then it passes the application name to the Eureka. Okay, and it asks for the uh, address of the particular application name. If Eureka has address for the requested application name, then it returns the address to the gateway and then gateway calls that particular service. If gateway receives multiple address, then it sends requests to one of the address considering load on services. So Eureka server is Netflix service discovery application that holds the information about all client service application. Every microservice will register into the Eureka server and Eureka server knows all the client application running on each port and IP address. Eureka server is also known as discovery server. Now, what is Eureka client? Any services which register itself to Eureka server is known as Eureka client. And in microservice architecture, each microservice registers itself to Eureka server API gateway. API Gateway also registers itself to Eureka Server and uses Eureka Server for service discovery by passing service application name. Now let's understand the flow of microservice architecture if we have all the microservices Eureka and Gateway with us. So here we have an Eureka Server. This is again um, a Spring Boot application which, which will be running on the 8091. We call Eureka server as service registry as well. Okay. This is our first microservice student, which we have already created in our third uh, video. You can go and see that video for better understanding. So this microservice is running on 8080. Okay. So whenever we deploy this microservice, it is starts running on 8080 and it register itself to the Eureka server with its application name is student-service and the port also, okay? So here you see the application name was student-service. So the same application name will be registered on Eureka. Now we have our second microservice. This we created in our fourth video. So here, whenever we deploy this microservice, it is starts running on 8081 and it will register itself to Eureka server. 
So you must be thinking that how these microservices registering itself to the Eureka server. Actually, each microservice has Eureka address in its application.yml file, which is configuration file. Okay, so there they have the complete address of Eureka where it is running and whenever they deploy automatically it gets registered to that server. Now we have API Gateway. Now API Gateway is again a Spring Boot project which we created in last video. So this would be running on 8090 port. Okay, and so whenever we deploy this API Gateway, this also registers itself to the Eureka server and here you can see that the application name of this gateway is registered here and the port as well okay and the ip also will be registered on the uh, eureka server now whenever a user interface is trying to call with an url first of all it will lands on the uh, api gateway here you see the user interface is calling this url https localhost 8090 slash student slash id question mark id equal one okay so this calls comes to the API gateway. Now API gateway will try to find the application name for anything starting with a student in the URL. So it will scan the URL and then it will see uh, that uh, since it is, it is having a student, so it will try to see that uh, what is the application name for this particular URL because it is having slash a student and these things is configured in the application.yml file of API Gateway where we use predicate and filter. So based on that predicates and filter, it tries to scan the URL and then it try to find the application name. Now once it got the application name, it will call the Eureka server. So API Gateway got the student hyphen service as the application name for this particular URL. So it will send to the Eureka for the discovery of the services for this particular application name. So Eureka server receives this application name and it will try to find in its directory that what is the IP and port for that particular application name. So it finds out that yeah, it has a student hyphen service which is running on 8080 and in my case, everything is running on localhost. So the IP will be localhost otherwise this Eureka server holds the IP address as well. So it will return the address for this particular application name and the address is localhost 8080. Now API gateway will directly call to that particular microservice which is having this address using the same URL. So API gateway will pass the same URL to the microservice student because now it got that, that URL should go to this microservice through service discovery using Eureka server. Now again, we see that user interface is calling the API gateway with this URL 8090 slash course slash ID. So again, gateway will try to find out the application name for anything starting with course in the URL and it will find out that application name is course hyphen service. So again, it will send to Eureka server and asking that, do you have anything related to this? Eureka servers uh, try to find out uh, any application running for this application name and it sees that yes, it is having a course hyphen service in its directory and it will return the port and IP for that particular application. Then API gateway will call that particular microservice. So this is the complete flow we went through and we understood how internally it works. In next video, we will see how we can achieve all these things through code. We already created these microservices and API gateway. We will create a Eureka server in next video and we will register all these microservices and API gateway to that server. And then we will try to access uh, through API gateway. If you find this video useful for you, please like and share this video and subscribe the channel. Don't forget to click the bell icon to get notification for upcoming videos. Thanks.